<clears throat> I must confess, I have been trying to avoid discussing today's topic on the Bifla. But, for the sake of the future and you who dwell in it, I cannot in good conscience leave it to go unmentioned. Therefore, today's topic is... B basic hygiene. And the reason it is such a terrifying subject to talk about is because I cannot even imagine the disturbance of how it will be when we once again live in a world without shampoo for the first time in centuries. If it, if it has come to pass that you have forgotten the very meaning of the word hygiene, heaven forbid, or more importantly where it can lead if ignored, then I hereby quote from the most reliable source on the web, Wikipedia, that, quote, some regular hygienic practices may be considered good habits by a society, while the neglect of hygiene can be considered disgusting, disrespectful, or even threatening, end quote. It is from here we begin the insurmountable task of bringing about the Pygmalion conversion of millions. Item 1. So, as defined on Wikipedia, it is used by aircraft operators to test the health of aircraft engines by performing frequent laboratory testing of engine oil. That can't be right. But, uh, uh, I must have printed out the wrong sheet. Uh, this is on something called the Spectrometric Oil Analysis Program, SOAP. <laughs> Looks like we'll have to wing it on this one, folks. <laughs> hmm. Spectrometric Oil Analysis Program. By comparing the results to the known chemical compositions of various engine parts, the abnormal wear of the engine parts can be identified, and servicing of the engine can be initiated thus sometimes avoiding further costly repairs or even catastrophic engine failure. Hmm. Ironically, that's not far from the truth. I suppose soap can avoid costly repairs or the catastrophic failure of one's own personal engine. But back to the main point. Soap is a tool used to ward off germs, and it is used by swiping it across the surface of the skin. Not that knowing how to use a bar of soap will help you very much, now that all the soap manufacturers are out of business. Therefore, I suggest that someone quickly find a long-lost soap recipe and get it into mass production quickly, before mankind goes to pot. Item 2. Wash your clothes frequently, and I would add to this, wash yourselves frequently. It is literally the best thing you can do to avoid many of the pitfalls of hygiene. As it concerns clothing, if left for long periods of time, stinky garments may begin to cling to your body and or rot themselves right off of you. As it concerns boots and or shoes, if feet are left in them for too long, i.e. months, fungus may begin to attack them, and the same foot you put into a tall boot may not be recognizable at that later point. Item 3. You're on your own with that one. Item four, brushing your teeth. Toothpaste will not be available. Therefore, most folks' teeth in your day will likely rot and fall out. There's not much you can do about that. I've discussed the issue with a friend, however, and he said that brushing your teeth without toothpaste might still be beneficial. But my concern is that even if that's true, you'd still need a constant supply of toothbrushes. I mean, those things wear over time. So, um, I mean, what are you going to do once your last spine runs out? By used? That's why I say, just let the teeth go. They're not all that important. I know what some people will say, but this is post-society. This is post-apocalyptic. We'll have to do without some things, you know? Last item five, and certainly the most scary... Dealing with mysteriously offensive smells brought about by extensive physical exertion and undisclosed perspiration left to fester for long periods of time without proper treatment. In other words, B.O. 
Ridding yourselves of this toxic natural occurrence must be at the forefront of your plans for societal reconstruction. Unless this comes to pass, mankind will be left to walk the streets in constant fear of an encounter with someone against which their nose has not the strength to stand. I advise the fragrantly challenged among you to avoid large crowds where the danger of a fatal whiff is most common. My final suggestion to all of you is this. Do not, under any circumstance, raise your arms above a 45 degree angle. So ends a disturbing entry. Until next time, I am Biff Bielgerberg, lending you the keys to societal reconstruction, one step at a time.